It's now time for On the Line with Cheryl Wilkerson. The conversation will range from local dialogue to international. This show is meant to enlighten, inform, and to inspire. On the Line with Cheryl Wilkerson begins now. Hello and welcome to On the Line with Cheryl Wilkerson. Another Sunday, another chance. I get to thank you for tuning into the show. I know you don't have to do it, but I thank you so much for tuning us in every Sunday at 12 near noon right here from the campus of Norfolk State University. Yeah, go Spartans. Okay, so I bring you, I will say this, I bring you the most interesting people. And I just want to share them because I just think they're extraordinary. And people are out here, they're doing great things. Sometimes you know their names. Sometimes you don't know their names. But they're all out here doing contributing to society because, you know, everybody doesn't need to be doing the same thing. And we find different people that are excelling in different areas. But today's guest, I must admit, you probably know her name. Her name is Haley Taylor Slitz. She is, she's been all over the media lately. This young lady has graduated from law school at the age of 19. Welcome to On the Line, Haley. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing well. I want to thank you in advance for taking out time to uh, talk to me today. And so the accolades have been all over everywhere. The youngest ever law school graduate that at Southern Methodist University. But are you the youngest ever law school grad for an African-American woman? Yes, I'm the youngest African-American to get their law degree, regardless of gender. And then I'm also the youngest woman to get her law degree, like period. Okay, that... mm. That gives me goosebumps. <laughs> now, look, I, Haley, I'm sitting here. I, I know the story, and that gives me goosebumps just hearing you say that. Okay, so let's go back. You were born and raised in Texas or somewhere else? I was born in California, uh, Los Angeles, and we moved to Texas when I was eight. Okay, so it blows my mind when I was reading up about you, and it said that you struggled First of all, struggled, and Haley just doesn't even seem to go (laughs) right in my brain. But it was saying that you struggled, I think they said, when you were in the fifth grade. Is that true? Yeah, I mean, struggle meaning my grades went from straight A's to B's. So, you know, it was just enough for my mom to notice and be like, hey, are you okay? But, um, yeah, no, it wasn't a great learning environment for me at all. What was it exactly, Haley, that wasn't great for you? I mean, it was a combination of things. Uh, probably the environment. Not probably the environment definitely contributed. Uh, there was a lot of microaggressions and racism. Um, but I think one of the biggest things that allowed homeschooling uh, homeschooling allowed me to excel that public school didn't provide was personalized education. Um, I just wasn't in the environment that I needed to be in to stay engaged and interested. So I wasn't really learning anything. And so did your parents go to the public school and try to rectify the problem or did they just cut to the chase and say, you know what, Haley's going to come home and we're going to homeschool her? Yeah, no, my parents did go to the teacher and ask that I be tested for the gift and talented program. She said no. She thought I should be held back because I didn't do well on our end of year like assessment or ours is the star exam or the tax test. But um, yeah, I didn't do well. So she thought I should be held back. And then my mom went to the principal and asked uh, the principal or the school if I could be tested for the Ginter Talented Program, and they said that you can only take the test in kindergarten. And like we said earlier, I was born in Los Angeles and moved here until I was in second grade when I was eight. And so... Um, well, wait, they yeah, said I mean, you could only... Say that part again. When they yeah, went to no, the principal, said, the principal said what? The principal said you can only take the Gifted and Talented Program test when you're in kindergarten, which is crazy and not true because there were other students who were taking the test. But, you know, it wasn't here in kindergarten, so that wasn't an option, apparently. So that's when my mom and dad were like, you know what, we'll just do this ourselves. Because at that point, your mom and dad, it was it was in your face, bologna mm-hmm. sausage, as my mother used to say, as opposed to, <laughs> you know, they might have been tiptoeing around your parents in the beginning, you know, trying mm-hmm. to discourage them. But at that point, that's just bologna sausage. Yeah. Kindergarten. Just mm-hmm. So exactly. How did, exactly. How did you take that news? Your parents, okay, you're going to be homeschooled. How did you take that news? Were you worried about you would miss your friends or you might have had some teachers that you liked or you just like being around other people at school? How did you take that? I didn't really care. I didn't really like school. So when they said we're going to pull you out in homeschooling, what I heard is I get to sleep in. So I was <laughs> fine with it. You know, of course, being an 11 year old, too, you're not really like. You know, you don't, you only care so much, you know, like you could see your friends outside of school if you had like a best that you guys always hang out with. But um, besides, besides that, I mean, it was really just, 
I didn't, it was school, school to me. I was 11. So I was like, okay, you know, I, I wasn't even enjoying learning in classes in school anyway. So I didn't really feel like, I feel like it was a great opportunity for me to do something different. <laughs> Okay, so you're homeschooled, and when you're homeschooled, you just really, really excel, Haley. And you graduated at age 13, is that correct? Yeah, high school at 13, yes. So that means you graduated high school at age 13. I don't Mm -hmm. know what that would look like. I don't know. If I were your parent, Haley, I don't know how I would know, know what next to engage you in I, I don't know because I would have problems with okay my 13 year old the next step would be college but my 13 year old yeah no exactly and it was something my parents had to talk about because you know I did high school so quickly um, from 11 to 13 in two years that now it was like you know what are the next steps is it college and so um, I did college in a total of three years instead of four but um, one of the years were at my local community college and then the other two were at a university which gave uh, which was great not only because it's cheaper um, I did two years worth of uh, mm-hmm. my, my cores in that one year at my local community college um, it was more efficient it was closer because you know I still couldn't drive by this point um, and it was just a really great transition transition period and introduction for, you know, a quote unquote introduction to college level courses um, without going to university and driving there and paying that price and, you know, also having that difficulty with the university and not that I couldn't handle the difficulty of a university. But of course, like you said, it's like, well, is my 13, am I going to send my 13 year old to college to a university? So my parents um, decided to test the waters first. And I am so glad that you brought up community colleges because I think that people have slept on them and they are jewels Mm -hmm. out here. And like Mm -hmm. you said, the cost is different. The classes are different. I mean, class wise, I'm I'm thinking and it's just a difference. And I think that people can benefit from them. And sometimes they need to take advantage of them or look at them a little bit more Mm -hmm. than society currently does. Yeah, I absolutely agree. They have so many good opportunities. Excellent. So we go and we finish in three years. So that means, Mm -hmm. Haley, you're 16 and you're graduating from the university at 16. What are we going to do now? Yes, I know. I know. I go to law school at 16 and um, uh, that was uh, I decided to go to law school for a a variety of reasons. Um, I would my mom's an ER doctor. And so all the way up until I was like 14 years old, I wanted to be an ER doctor like her. Um, And so actually. My first year and a half, so halfway through my undergrad, I was a major in chemistry. But oh, okay. I did some, yeah, so I did some self-reflection, though, and thought about what I want, what impact I want to make on the world, what I want my career to be, who I want to be, you know, what I want to do. And um, I got to uh, looking at my educational journey and how fortunate I was to have parents who got me to this point, who knew that this was an opportunity and knew this was an option, but also could take advantage of it. But how many students out there whose families don't know that this is an option or can't because, you know, life is busy and they can't do it. And that's okay. But they shouldn't. They shouldn't have to. And I should still be able to be a 19 year old lawyer without having, you know, while have going to public school. But we all know I would not have been able to. And so I think I thought about that. And I was like, you know. I want to go um, change the public school system. Uh, That's what I want. I want to change the way that it functions. I want to change its foundation. Um, It just needs some updates desperately. And that's where I was the field I wanted to go into. And that's what I wanted to do. And so, of course, what sparked this decision or what sparked this whole conversation was, um, again, I wanted to be a doctor. And this is around the time you start thinking about the MCAT and MCAT prep and all that good stuff. And so I... um, you know, obviously that wasn't the reason why, but it was it sparked a conversation for me to discover the reasons why I wanted to switch my major to education instead of chemistry. And so I got my undergraduate degree in education. And um, I like to think of it as two main ways of changing the system. One is from inside being a teacher and being creating that good classroom for those students to grow and thrive. And, you know, like just be, be that, you know, statistic that changes the trajectory of the student's life. And then also outside the system, writing legislation that allows other teachers to do exactly that and um, changing uh, writing legislation that changes the way our public school system functions, what it provides and its foundation. So uh, that led to law school. Your mother, when you, she had such a great influence on you. So when you told her that you wanted to switch, what was her response? And do you have siblings and what does your dad do? Mm -hmm. 
So uh, my mom is actually the one who sat down with me and pulled out all the lesson plans. Uh, I mean, uh, not lesson, all the degree plans for different majors. And she's the one who helped me consider what I wanted to switch a major to when I told her that I was, you know, just thinking about whether or not I want to be a chemistry major. And she's like, you know, it's a great question. Um, let's look at what the rest of the chemistry degree looks like. And let's look at what other degrees look like and see which one you may want to switch to if you want to switch. Wise and so um, wise. Yeah, she wise. was very, very helpful. Um, but yeah, no. So of course she was supportive and, both my dad. Um, but, you yeah, know, my dad, speaking of, uh, he is a campaign manager, uh, marketing expert. Uh, he's just he is um, a lot of things. But uh, those are the things that he does most. And uh, it was uh, it was very helpful because he could do a lot of that work from home, like virtually. Mm -hmm. So while we were homeschooling, my mom was a full time doctor and she obviously did help tremendously. It was like 50 50. But at the time she had to go to work like physically, he was able to drive us and also stay home with us. So that ends up working out really nicely. Um, and then also, yes, I do have two siblings, uh, speaking of. And my brother, Ian, is 16 and going into a second year of his master's program. Wonderful. And my, I know. And my sister, Hannah, is 14 and in her second year of college. Because so. they all, after you were homeschooled, then your parents are set. Everybody's going to be homeschooled. Is that how that worked? Yes, yes. I was homeschooled. And at the same time, they pulled me out. They pulled my brother and sister out, too. Um, and yeah, I mean, it just kind of took off from there. It is just a remarkable story. Tell me what your brother is getting his master's in. He's getting his MBA. So oh, uh, oh. I'm really excited. Okay. I know I'm really excited for him to be able to use that. He already has a, a business called Calamity Gaming. Um, so I know that he wants to expand on that. And so after he gets his degree, I'm excited to see where it takes him where he takes it and what is your sister studying uh i i think she's studying sociology um she, she recently changed her major so uh, i don't know if she changed it to sociology or from sociology but that's what she was studying mm -hmm. um she's not sure what she wants to do quite yet but you know of I course she's that, got a little time yeah exactly i was gonna <laughs> say of course that's fine especially uh in your second year of college you know you have a lot of time to think about you know as you take your classes in your 3,000 or 4,000 level classes you get exposed to the field of study that you chose and then you then you'll have a better under like a better um, foundation for where you what you want to do next Haley Taylor Slitz she's my guest today you've read about her hopefully you've read about her I know you saw her picture and you saw the headline talking about how she has uh, made history by graduating from law school at age 19 let me ask you this I remember reading uh, black and white uh, Richard Williams book about his daughters uh, Venus and Serena and I remember mm -hmm. reading the chapters where he said that when he made certain decisions for his daughters he got backlash as if it were up for a discussion from you know people within the tennis world people within the world whatever mm -hmm. whatever do you know or remember Haley if your parents or if anybody actually stepped to you and said you know, you shouldn't be doing this or your parents shouldn't have you going this route. Do you remember any of that? And if it happened, how was it handled? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. No, my parents talk about all the time how um, they got a lot of backlash from the, the some of the people that they told when they said that they were going to homeschool us, uh, the responses when it was backlash were like, you know, that's a bad decision or you're going to mess it up or, you know, like, why would you do that? Or, you know, things, things along those lines. And um, I, honestly, they just got, you know, like their opinions just, you know, like, like you said, like it was up for debate. So mm -hmm. the fact that they thought that their opinions were somehow asked for um, means that, you know, they were just in, in no, no nicer way to say it. They were just kind of cut. <laughs> so, right. mm -hmm. um, you know, it's just, you really, you got to know who is really part of your village and who to keep around, you know? And so, uh, my parents, you know, that, that did show a lot of people's true colors and, uh, you, you know, you adjust how you interact with them accordingly. And I'm sitting here wondering, it's just, I just remember talking to people in all these years I've done interview and I remember interviews and I remember one person who's very prominent in this community here in the Hampton Roads, Norfolk area, Portsmouth area. And I remember mm -hmm. him talking about how when he was in high school, the guidance counselor told him basically he wasn't going to amount to anything. And then fast mm -hmm. forward years later, that same high school is calling him to do, to be the baccalaureate speaker. Mm -hmm. So okay. I'm wondering if you experienced any of those people that were, let's say, negative in the beginning 
and now have since come around, not not since you've been in the press and graduated, but throughout your journey, did people come around and, and realize, hey, you know what, this is different, but it is working. Yeah, there have been a couple people like that. And, you know, it's it's, it's about ba- you, you try to find a balance between people, you know, like people who were haters and now that you're successful, they want to be part of the narrative and mm-hmm. you need to know really not to bring those people into your life. And people who were ignorant or apprehensive uh, and now that they have been educated about what homeschooling can do, um, maybe now they will implement some of the uh, some some of it in their own lives. Um, not only are they not haters anymore, but, you know, they're learners. And so there's a difference between somebody who's just a hater and somebody who's ignorant uh, sure. or somebody who doesn't want to learn. And so, you know, it's, it's a balance and most people are just haters, you know, and so anybody who's. Uh, listening, if somebody tries to tell you, you know, we hear, you know, Katanji, Judge Katanji Brown Jackson, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris, their counselors, what they said. Um, so you hear a lot of it, and you know, they weren't just haters, and you know, there's no bringing, you know, there's no like coming around. Right. But sometimes you have people who are just ignorant and don't really know. Mm-hmm what homeschooling is or um, they have their stereotypes in their head of it being hyper political or hyper religious and when you do it or clarify with them um, maybe they have a better understanding and now they're educated which I mean at the end of the day is better you know for them to be educated for them to understand what homeschooling is and to not be so judgmental when somebody else is doing it Um, if you could be the person who educates them that's great but, you know, some people are just haters. So, you know, it, it's a balance. But most people are just haters, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so to tell the truth, most of the time they're just hating. And I don't understand that about homeschooling because, you know, I think it's coming up now, the the National Spelling Bee. And most of the time the winners are young men and women that have been homeschooled, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's like, how can we put this negative slant on something when we see the positive that comes yeah. out of it. I mean, it's, exactly. it's in our face. There are other contests as well, na- national contests. And so many times you go and you look and read about the winner. They have mm-hmm. been homeschooled. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Haley, do you think you would follow that tradition with your own future children? I definitely will. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think because, um, like I feel like we talked about earlier, I was in public school until fifth grade, and I don't even think that my kids will attend public school. Um, I think that it might be cool for them to go to, like, you know, daycares and stuff, for them to be able to have that experience of the cubbies and the teacher and the little peers and stuff. But, you know, you have to recognize that these are, like, the optimal years of your kid's life. These are the these are the determinative years, you know, when they're young. Mm-hmm. And they're still, they're still you know, developing and baking <laughs> and uh eventually you know like the bread isn't batter anymore it's bread you know when they get older and so while they're young you can still mix the ingredients you know you can still you know it's still flexible but once they're once they're baked it's baked and so uh obviously that's just, um why it's so important to be present in your kid's life when they're young um as much as you can as much as life allows and so i definitely want to homeschool my kids when uh when i have them it's just um a matter of i guess when you are you planning on going and obtaining any more academic degrees no Okay. No, this was my last one, yeah. Okay. Right. You said 19 years. I'm kind of tired at this point. Huh? Mm-hmm. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you get it. Yep. <laughs> All done. So what are some of the quote-unquote fun things that have happened to you because of this notoriety that you've received from finishing law school at age 19? Yeah, so uh, as you mentioned earlier, I was uh, I have a lot of press that's uh, I've been that I've been talking to a lot of interviews, and I think that that's so fun. I really enjoy it. I enjoy getting my story out there because I hope to inspire anybody who's listening. And so I really, really enjoy it. I've been offered a couple of times to keynote speak. I'm at uh, my third time, which is uh, which is awesome <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> because, or, or maybe it's my fourth because uh, you know it's it's pretty awesome for somebody to come and invite you to their event as the keynote speaker. So, um, of course, it's nerve wracking, but also exciting, and so uh, that's really fun. Um, I was on the Tamron Hall show, and she uh, was so so generous and gave me and my family a trip to Grenada, and so oh uh, I'm gosh, really excited you know about what? that. Haley, there is a black-owned resort there, and from what I read, it is so luxurious. The family has 
has owned mm-hmm. it for years, you have to go and check it out unless that's where she gave you the gift to. to. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm going to. I okay. don't know where. I don't. I don't know all the details yet, so it might be that exact resort, which would be awesome. Um, but if not, we're definitely going to check that out. Now that you said that. Excellent. And so, at 19, you're featured by Beyonce. Mm-hmm. Black History 2020 honoree. You, you're part of a list that includes Stacey Abrams. Stacey Abrams is just, she is a whole vibe. You're in mm-hmm. that, you're in that conversation. You're in that conversation with the great late John Lewis. You're in that mm-hmm. conversation at 19. Haley, that gives me goosebumps. I'm so <laughs> serious when I'm telling you this. <laughs> Robert Smith, Haley Taylor Slitz. Yes. This is what we need. And, you know, so many times the opposite is what we find in the paper. And people say, oh, I don't watch the news or I don't look at the news because it's always bad. Do you feel Thank a burden you. because of that? No, I don't. Good. I don't think, um, I, yeah, I don't think that it, it's a burden. Of course, there's um, pressure with goal setting and that applies to anybody. You know, of course, if you set your own goal, um, you're, if, you know, if nothing else, you have pressure on yourself to achieve it. Um, but that's obviously healthy. Uh, so I, you know, feel that, you know, pressure, but mm-hmm. that healthy pressure, no, in no way, shape or form negative, um, of course, when, with my goal setting. And so, uh, no, it's all, all positive over here. Wonderful. What do you do for fun? What is fun for Haley? <laughs> I have a lot of things I like to do for fun. I, I like to play video games and I like to read and write. I like to do art. Um, I like uh, technology a lot. I've built a couple desktops and stuff, so I really like that. Um, I like I like food a lot, so whether it be <laughs> cooking it or eating it, oh, uh, really? I am down. Yes, I am down a, a foodie. I love food. Um, I like going outside. We have three dogs and I have two guinea pigs and I love playing with them. Uh, my friends, my family, my boyfriend, I love hanging out with all them so now uh, I what's have, your favorite cuisine uh i god that's a great question i think it's more of like a genre of food okay. i think my favorite genre okay. is gonna be italian <laughs> but i don't think i could narrow it down further than that because i absolutely love ravioli but on top of that i also love fettuccine alfredo and uh name any other italian dish and i'm absolutely in love with it so Italian is as narrow as this is going to get. <laughs> and tell me this. What do you like to read and write? Uh, I love to read mystery novels and romance novels, and I love to write the same thing. And I also really like to write fantasy as well. Oh, okay. Very good. I know that you are a member of Sigma Gamma Rho, and I wish I could yeah. connect you with my niece. My niece is an adventurer, and I'm so proud of her. She's, she's working yeah. on getting her master's in conservation or whatever, so... Haley, nice. I, I get these texts from her or these posts from her, and one day she's in Romania, and she's got these bats she's showing me, and the next day, you know, she's in Wales, wow. and she's showing me about the sheep in Wales and the birds, and I'm sure nice. you would think these birds are related to so-and-so, and she's at Mexico <laughs> diving with the sharks or whatever, but oh my God. just the way you the talk and your energy, it reminds me of her, and I'm just mm-hmm. so happy that you all have this energy and you have this get up and go and I pray that it doesn't leave you because you're on the path to do great things now how did you get into fencing my mom yeah so when I was homeschooled my mom did a really good job making sure that we got like you know that number one that socialization aspect but number two um just being that well-rounded student so um, I did fencing, uh, my mom found the sport and signed me up. I absolutely loved it. Speech and debate, choir, I was a roar. You know, I'm a Sigma Gamma Rho now. Um, I'm mm-hmm. legacy with my mom. I love being uh, in that sisterhood with her, but I was a roar before I was a slow roar. Um, I did photography and horseback riding. I, did, you know, like the list goes on and yes. on and of all the things that I did, you know, basketball, volleyball, piano, I've done for 10 years, harp for five. So my mom did a really, really good job making sure that we not only had that socialization, but we're, we're about well-rounded students. And, uh, that's how I got introduced to fencing and I just love it. And I love the sport. And so is the next step to take the bar? Yes, the bar is July 26th and 27th, so um, that is the plan. Are you serious? I've been studying, yes, it's a quick turnaround, so uh, I've been studying hard. <laughs> Haley, I thank you so much for taking this time because I know usually people <laughs> shut themselves in a 
in a hotel room and just study, I know. study, study for the. So I know you're doing it in Texas or somewhere else. Yes, in Texas, and so this is this is a great. I purposely schedule things like this. It's a great mental break. Otherwise, I would be locked in a hotel studying, and I think I might just drive myself insane. <laughs> Okay, so this is what you have to do for me now. This is personal. This, okay, so this is great. <laughs> when you when you get that, however they tell you, I guess email or whatever that you have passed the bar in Texas, please just send me a text and say mm-hmm, I passed I because I will scream wherever I mm-hmm. am. I will scream for <laughs> Haley. Okay, <laughs> I will. I'll text you. I know I'll be screaming too. <laughs> yes. Okay. So then we pass the bar. Then what is the next step? I want to go into teaching. So I'm going to be teaching at a school called EA Young here in South Lake, Texas. And I'm going to be teaching AP government and politics. So you've already gotten the teaching job. Yes, I have. Okay. Okay. I see. I see. And then how are you going to finagle that to the legislative end, writing the legislation? Absolutely. So I wanted to teach. Not, I feel very called to teaching. But additionally, I think that me being in the classroom and teaching and interacting with these students, having that day to day, getting my hands dirty is very important to understanding exactly what legislation I write, what impact it has on the classroom. So um, I definitely want that foundation. Um, like I said, my degree is in education. I want that foundation in what the day to day looks like, what it means to be a teacher. Obviously, we all know what it means to be a student, but what ramifications do certain laws have on the classroom? And not that, you know, like you have to be a teacher to understand that, but of course you have a whole other perspective and a, a fantastic foundation if you have taught. So um, that's definitely what I want. We need more teachers in the room anyway when uh, in the legislative writing and legislative room. So um, I definitely want that foundation. And I think on top of being really called to teaching that this is a great opportunity for me. You know what? I say that all the time. My mom was a teacher for 30 years and she was... (laughs) She was upset that I didn't go into teaching. She was also upset that mm-hmm. I didn't pledge Delta. But anyway, <laughs> uh, but I think that what I do on the radio is my form of teaching by presenting people such mm-hmm. as yourself to mm-hmm. the audience. I, I, But teachers are definitely called because you take a classroom and say you have 30 students and you don't know if one student the night before went home hungry Mm -hmm. came to school hungry you don't know if the other is going Mm -hmm. through a tough time because maybe they've got some kind of disability that hasn't been recognized you put all of these different students in a room and you make it make sense that is a calling Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. i firmly believe that i am so thrilled that that you have chosen that career path (laughs) thank you i know i am so excited well, I'm excited that you have the job already. And I, you know what? I wasn't even thinking. I was like, this is Haley. I should have known you already had the job. <laughs> you probably could have had any job you wanted at this point. Really, seriously, mm-hmm. right? I am just, I'm so happy for these opportunities that I've gotten. Wonderful. Well, I want to thank you for joining us today on the line. It has really been great talking to you. Your youth, your enthusiasm, your common sense, your book sense. <laughs> All of that is on display, and that's why you're getting the calls and the notoriety. And you may not ever meet the person, but there are people out there, and they're going to say, you know what, I heard her or I saw her or I read her story or whatever, and she changed my life. And for that, Haley, you keep going strong. Even when they come after you, people are going to come after you, but you keep going because you are a light, and I believe in you, and a whole lot of people believe in you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please give your parents my absolute best. And please, whatever you do, don't forget that text. Okay? I will. I will. Thank you so much. Is there any, you want to give out any social media handles for people to follow you? Yeah. I mean, my website is HaleyTaylorSchlitz.com. And on there, you can find everything about me. I like to call it a Haley Hub. Um, It has my shirt, my book, my podcast. It has my Sigma Gamera activity. It has all of my social media handles, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, all of that good stuff. So um, my bio has a contact form if you want to reach out to me. So um, yeah, I mean, check out my website. Thank you so much. That has been Haley Taylor Slitz. She is a wonder. We're glad we had her on today. I'm so glad you joined us today for On the Line with Cheryl Wilkerson. We had a good time. You all have a wonderful Sunday. Stay safe and we will talk soon. Bye-bye.